So anyway, I want to first of all say thank you very much. Uh, it's been for quite a few years now that your um, golf tournament has been providing monies for Western Sky and our conservation work. And I think for the last two years, Fanny and Andrea, I believe we've been giving you teasers about a particular project of ours that we weren't able to talk about. But today, we can talk about it, so no longer a tease. So anyways, I want to talk today about Matheus Ranch and um, what it means to conservation and really what it means to CLRA and what it might mean over uh, the long term. Um, I'm going to talk about Western Skyline Trust. I'm going to talk about the University of Alberta and the Rangeland Research Institute. I'm going to talk about the conservation of Matheus Ranch. And I'm going to talk about the legacy component of that in terms of research and education and really a good part of the reason why we have gathered around here at this AGM and conference. But first of, all, uh, first of all, a little bit about us. Western Skyline Trust is a private, non-for-profit organization. And we work with private landowners to conserve land and, most importantly, the long-term stewardship or the management of those lands. I want to talk about cons how conserving land that we do that is critical to watershed health and integrity uh, is important in southern Alberta. I want to talk, and I also want to mention that we have focused on rivers, repairing areas, and their associated habitats. So, before I talk about the ranch itself, I want to talk about a thing called conservation easement because that is really the critical piece that we did with respect to Matheus Ranch. So conservation easement is a piece of legislation enacted by the Land, the Alberta um, Land Stewardship Act. And a conservation easement allows a private landowner to retain ownership of the land and they actually still manage and operate their property throughout the uh, forevermore. The conservation easement, such as Western Sky, would restrict certain rights or land uses such as subdivision and development, the draining or altering of water bodies or water courses, the cultivation of native prairie or permanent cover. And the agreement runs on title and it runs with the land. And that means that that conservation easement is perpetual forevermore. So the Rangeland Research Institute of the University of Alberta is an organization dedicated to promoting and conducting leaning-edge research and, edu and teaching about rangeland and improving the sustainability of rangeland use and their management. So what does it do? It enhances the conservation of, of, of the ranch itself and other rangelands throughout Prairie Canada and beyond. Critical mass of researchers capable of addressing a wide range of conservation issues. And the value of that research extends way beyond the borders of Alberta, and I would argue to you that it is across Western North America. A little bit of history about Matheus Ranch. Before 1900, it was an important travel and hunting area for First Nations. In 1900, it was homesteaded by John Ware, and he's an iconic Alberta rancher and cowboy back from that era. In 1952, Ducks Unlimited Canada actually completed their Verger project, and that simple project did a transformative change to the ranch. It actually provides irrigation-fed uh, water 
into about 1,000 acres of wetlands on the ranch. In 1977, the ranch was purchased by Ruth and Edwin Mathias. And in 2010, as being alumni from the University of Alberta, they decided to donate the ranch to the University of Alberta. In 2012, the Rangeland Research Institute was created. And in 2014, Western Sky and the University of Alberta entered into that conservation easement. And a second important element was also created, and it's called the University of Alberta Rangeland Endowment. So I'm going to talk more about all of that a little bit more for you. But first of all, where the heck is Matheus Ranch? Well, it is in the middle, smack dab in the middle of Prairie, Alberta, north of Brooks, along Highway 36, on your way north to Hannah, Alberta. So if you look at it, you can see the ranch in white. It looks like the Cape Crusader in shape. But it's actually situated along the Red Deer River, just upstream from Dinosaur Provincial Park. And you can see the kind of the curved ribbon of irrigation from the Eastern Irrigation District that lies to the west and to the south of the ranch. But you can also see that the ranch is part of a very large, intact landscape of native prairie. So the ranch itself, some of the stats, is 12,300 acres in size. We can serve 11,800 acres through the conservation easement. And the difference in the acreage is due to the fact that there are two ranch buildings or houses on a ranch. So we exempted the quarter sections from each of those from the actual conservation easement. So it's bounded by the Ridge River, Massillon Creek to the south, and there's a 1,000 th acre wetland complex created by Ducks of Canada. There's 29 endangered critters and plants on the ranch itself. So a little bit more zoom in on the ranch. You can see the round pivot fields from the irrigation um, uh, fields that are on the ranch. It's about 700 acres in size. You can see the wetland complex. You can see uh, the um, Highway 36 that runs through the middle of the ranch, going north-south through the property. And there's about over 10,000 acres of native rangeland. It is a working ranch. There are cows, a thousand head. There's irrigation. There's oil and gas. There's about 90 well heads or well sites on the ranch itself, and a vast network of pipelines. Okay, and then of course is research, education, and extension work. So what's on the ranch in terms of vegetation? Well, we have loamy prairie. We have semi-active sand dunes on the ranch. There's sandy prairie. There are river breaks, coolies. There are shrublands, mostly with thorny buffalo berry. And there is a whole bunch of wetlands on the ranch. So some of the threats, intensive cultivation, acreage subdivision, landscape fragmentation, and industrial development. And in fact, they've actually twinned a high voltage transmission line along Highway 36 last year, right through the middle of the ranch as well. And that's a picture of what was happening last year. Okay, it's a very busy place. So the purpose of our conservation easement, the CE, is really to conserve the native grasslands, the riparian areas, and those wetlands. Protect the ranch from for any fragmentation through subdivision or any land use change. Don't convert the native prairie to some other use. And a consistent and high quality rangeland health. And a belt and suspenders approach to conservation. 
So I'm up here today talking to you, and my pants are being held up with some, a belt. And I'm very, very confident in fact they will not fall down talking to you. However, I can be guaranteed he will not fall down if I'm also wearing some suspenders. So think that the university received a gift from Ed and Ruth Matheus, and you think it's protected. Well, the university teaches it does not conserve land. And sometimes post-secondary institutions actually do sell off lands because there might be another purpose that they could use the land for. And in fact, that's actually happening in Edmonton a little bit with the university. But our mandate is to conserve land forevermore. So it is, in essence, doubly protected by two organizations. Okay? And that is a really unique partnership, a unique situation that did occur for Matheus Ranch. Okay? I dare say to you that the partnership that has occurred between a very large institution and a smaller land in conservation is of national importance. It really hasn't happened anywhere else that I can think of. Okay? So when we're talking about range uh, the, the ranch management, with the university owning the ranch, managing the ranch, conducting all that leading edge research, a lot of the ranch management will be peer reviewed, it will be scientific, it will be adaptive. And most importantly, that range management will be perpetual in nature. And the conservation and education of what's going to happen on the ranch is also perpetual. And I'll talk a little bit more about why that would be that way. The university in 2014 built a rangeland ecology and management endowment centered at the ranch. It will provide perpetual and critical resource, a mass, a critical mass, to sustain relative, relevant research and outreach. And the reason why that happened is the magic from the conservation of the ranch. Western Sky was blessed by receiving major funding from the province of Alberta from Alberta Environment and Parks. And it's through what is called the Alberta Land Trust Grant Program. We received over $5 million from that program to enable Western Sky to conserve the ranch. The conservation easement is worth money. You can actually assign a value to that easement. And that value of that easement is $3.8 million. We paid the university 3.8. The university did not put it in their back pocket. They actually took and put, turned that money into that perpetual endowment to feed all of that research and teaching on the ranch. And that is the magic of what happened out there. So perpetual and critical resources for research and outreach Okay, and the University of Alberta's endowment goal is to increase that over the next four years to $8.8 .8 million. There's new housing in the ranch. They can actually house 25 researchers out there at any given time. Okay, um, and a big part of it is study about ecological goods and services, whether it's water purification, flood and drought mitigation, forage production, wildlife habitat, all of those things that make up natural capital. And why is it so important? Because we know that if we do not quantify and put a value on all of those things that are so hard to quantify, that we will continue to lose more of those because other values will take over the use of land. So I'm not going to go through this long list. There's about 15 research 
projects here that I've listed here. At any given time, there's about 20 to 30 projects happening out at the ranch. But it gives you a sense for what is happening out there. The large number of different types of research that is happening out on the ranch. I'm going to talk about about four or five of those key things here for you right now in terms of research and how we may connect back to CLRA and to your, you connecting your own businesses. Okay, so one of them is birds. So on the ranch, they are surveying 200 plots, or they have over two breeding seasons, doing visual and song counts. They documented over 100 species of birds. And the next step is, is to try to look at how they respond to disturbance out at the ranch. Smooth brome invasion ecology is another key element. Looking at patterns, mechanism associated with smooth brome on semi-arid landscapes. We're going to talk about looking at competition, moisture, nutrient cycling. How can we better understand the plant so we can better manage the plant and retain the integrity, the health of our native systems. Looking at residual impacts of pipeline installation of above and below ground communities. And that is an ongoing important research that's happening with the ranch. So looking at seed bank diversity, flowers, present invasive plants along pipelines and other disturbed areas. So I talked about the high voltage transmission line. So looking at, is there other ways we can actually, as we're building infrastructure to decrease the impact on rangeland using mats and other techniques? So they're testing that right now at the ranch. How can we better deal with heavy traffic flow, things like that? So that's really it in a nutshell. Uh, I do want to say to you two things here before I finish off. One is that there's very few places on the continent where you can go out to a piece of land and find white-tailed deer, mule deer, moose, elk, and pronghorn antelope all within eyesight of each other. And as I mentioned earlier, the odd rattlesnake or two. So it's a very special place that a lot of people don't know about, but I'm thinking there'll be a lot more. And then lastly, I want to invite any and all of you that if you're interested in knowing more about what's happening at the ranch and what the ranch means, please contact us or contact the University of Alberta. I think there is plenty of synergy and opportunities to get involved in any which way that you may want to uh, to help with this, uh, the important work that's, that we are all involved with.